Item number, SCP-602, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-602 appears to be immobile and localized to apartment Green Street, New York City. Thus, containment of SCP-602 consists of keeping the public away from and ensuring that SCP-602 does not expand beyond or move out of apartment however due to its location in a heavily populated urban center i.e manhattan scp-602 requires special considerations for containment apartment must remain locked from the outside with both mechanical locks and concealed electronic locks no one may enter or remove anything from apartment without level 4 authorization apartment the entire first floor and basement and all unoccupied units at Green Street are collectively designated Containment Site 28. The remaining units in the building are occupied by civilians who have lived there since SCP-602 was initially contained. These units will be acquired by the Foundation as they are vacated, but occupants will not be directly forced out of their apartments. However, all measures, short of lethal force, have been authorized to keep civilians out of Site-28 areas, up to and including non-lethal force and use of Class A amnestics. To date, the Foundation has acquired of the units in the building. See Document 602-S28 for more information. Description SCP-602 is an unseen entity that can manipulate objects within apartment SCP-602 can exert enough force to knock people over and hold them down. While SCP-602 appears able to affect objects anywhere within apartment, it cannot affect anything outside the apartment if the front door is closed. Thus, SCP-602 can be effectively contained with external locks on apartment's door. Apartment does not have standard furnishings. Instead, Scattered around the apartment are dozens of sculptures that resemble extremely distorted human beings. These sculptures appear to be made from a variety of materials, including marble, granite, wood, metal, porcelain, data expunged, and glass. Data expunged. Two doors lead out of the entry room. A door in the left wall that is stuck and has never been opened and a door in the back wall that is usually closed. The second door leads to a room that contains more sculptures, as well as a table, on which lay a large array of tools for sculpting data expunged. Also in this room are outside-facing windows that always have the blinds drawn. All attempts to remove any of the sculptures or tools, or the table, from apartment have been met with violent resistance from SCP-602. Any person inside apartment is subject to attack by SCP-602. Through an unknown method, SCP-602 can apparently transform a living human into a sculpture of variable material, similar to the sculptures already present in apartment. When doing so, SCP-602 will close and lock the front door of the apartment from the inside completely barring entry to and exit from the apartment during that time. SCP-602 will also destroy or otherwise neutralize any sensory equipment set up within apartment and has consistently destroyed concealed surveillance equipment carried by test subjects before transforming these subjects. Addendum 1 Document 602-S28 Establishment of Site-28 SCP-602 came to the attention of the Foundation in late 1980 after the disappearance of Data Expunged. The Foundation acquired the Green Street Building shortly thereafter. Overwatch determined that the interests of the Foundation would best be served by low-profile piecemeal acquisition of the rest of the building, rather than exerting eminent domain over civilian-occupied units. Once SCP-602 was officially classified as safe, and containment procedures were enacted, the areas of the building held by the Foundation were designated Containment Site 28. Task Force Pi-1, City Slickers, 
was established to keep civilians out of Site-28 areas. Data Expunged was established as a front business on the ground floor of the building. Site-28 has expanded its scope since its founding, serving as a base of operations for the Foundation in the northeastern U.S., temporary and permanent housing for Foundation personnel, and a containment site for a few safe SCPs. Pi-1 was upgraded to a mobile task force, specializing in acquisition and containment of anomalous objects in heavily populated environments. Members of Pi-1 also offer training in urban operations at Site-28. For more information on the urban operations curriculum, see Document P-1 Urbops. Addendum 2 Document 602-L-01 Exploration Log Note: Unless otherwise noted, in all procedures involving SCP-602, subjects are dressed as maintenance personnel and all civilians who live on the same floor as SCP-602, as well as those directly above or below apartment are outside the building. Surveillance of these civilians is provided by Pi-1. Exploration Log 1 Materials Subject D-602-1 Equipped with a TV camera and two-way radio A second camera on a tripod Procedure the subject records footage of each sculpture in the room. The subject attempts to open the door on the left wall, but cannot, declaring it stuck. Around 12 minutes after entering, the subject hears a smashing sound, turns, and sees the pulverized remains of the camera and tripod. The subject, data expunged. The subject starts to move into the next room when the video cable is cut, and the front door closes and locks. Radio contact with the subject is lost within seconds. Subsequent examination of the apartment shows no sign of the subject or any equipment brought inside. Analysis Footage shows 11 sculptures in the front room and at least 4 in the second room. Also in the second room is a table with what appears to be tools on it. Dr. Devon suggests a possible resemblance between some sculptures and several missing persons including data expunged. Exploration Log 2 Materials Two remote control motorized bases mounted with cameras and microphones. One camera array facing in through the open front door. Procedure One motorized camera is sent straight toward the second room, while the other hangs back in the entry room. Just before the lead camera reaches the second room, both motorized cameras are suddenly and simultaneously flattened by an invisible force. Nothing else happens for 10 minutes, at which time, the remains of the motorized cameras are pulled out by the video cables. Analysis Thermal imaging shows the temperature of the apartment dropping by between 7 and 15 degrees Celsius, moments before the cameras are flattened by pillars of intense cold that briefly manifest above each camera. The two cameras were crushed within one twentieth of a second of each other. Exploration Log 3 Materials Subject D-6022, equipped with a TV camera and two-way radio. Four remote control motorized bases, mounted with cameras and microphones, made from military-grade reinforced steel. One camera array facing in through the open front door. Two thermal imaging arrays facing in through the windows. A variety of sensors, including microphones, seismographs, Geiger counters, data expunged, set up on surfaces adjacent to apartment, i.e., the walls of adjacent apartments, the floor of the apartment above, and the ceiling of the apartment below. Procedure The subject is instructed to record footage of the second room from the entry room by zooming in as much as possible, while the motorized cameras observe the rest of the room. After 16 minutes, the subject is instructed to try the left-hand door. The subject claims the door is jammed and cannot be opened. As the subject enters the second room to record more footage, the front door suddenly closes and locks, and all of the cameras lose their video signals simultaneously. Preliminary analysis shows the cables were cut just as in Experiment 1. When the door unlocks, there is no sign of the subject or any equipment in the apartment. Analysis 
right before the signal is lost. One of the cameras records something on the front door. Analysis of the footage suggests that the object is a wire rack around 15 centimeters long attached to the inside surface of the front door. The external cameras record the expected drop in temperature, though exact data could not be obtained through the closed window blinds. Several minutes later, external cameras record a sustained spike in far UV radiation that lasts approximately 40 seconds. No other unusual emissions are detected. Note: Overwatch has suspended exploration of SCP-602 for now, primarily because we've neared the limit of what we can learn using current technology without it becoming insanely expensive. At the very least, we would need stronger materials and more maneuverable robotics, though a cheap way to send a video signal without a cable would be nice too. It's just as well though, because I'm concerned that Mrs. Yankowitz up in is becoming suspicious again. I don't know how she knows what she does, but either way, getting that many amnestics can't be good for anybody, particularly a lady her age. I recommend she be investigated as a potential SCP. Dr. Devon. Subject interviewed 1980. No anomalous abilities suspected. Class B amnestic administered. Dr. On 1990, apartment was open for the first time in several years, and video footage was recorded from just outside the front door. Several differences were observed compared to footage recorded in 80. First, there is now a closed door between the entry room and the room with the table. We cannot tell whether the door has a lock on it, but as much force as 602 can generate, it's probably not necessary. More striking, though, are the sculptures in the entry room. They appear to be the same sculptures of the same people as before, but most of them have been changed, some pretty drastically. Lastly, and most significantly, attached to the inside of the front door is a wire rack holding a very sharp knife. Photographic evidence has proven that this knife almost certainly cut the video cables in the experiments. I'm convinced that 602 put the rack up after the second experiment, further evidence that 602 is sapient. Dr. Devon Addendum 3 Document 602-L02 Contact Log Contact Log 1 Materials Subject D-602-03 One Child's Wagon Model Radio Flyer Ten Fully Illustrated Books of Sculpture including the works of Henry Moore, the works of August Rodin, the works of Alexander Calder, sculptors of the Italian Renaissance, and medieval Gothic sculpture. Three mail-order catalogs for art supply companies, bookmarked in the sculpting sections, with attached order forms. One piece of paper, containing a half-finished press release describing a gallery show by the mysterious new art sensation from Soho that everyone's talking about, and a handwritten addendum stating, this could be you. One cardboard sign, with the words, read before destroying, written on it in thick black 30 centimeter high letters. Procedure. The wagon was loaded carefully in the following order. Press release on the bottom, then the art supply catalogs, then the sculpture books, and finally, the cardboard sign on top. The door to the apartment was opened, and D-6023 pushed the wagon inside before quickly exiting the apartment. Researcher Vocht then loudly announced into the apartment, Here you go, friend. We'll be back in 24 hours, and closed and locked the apartment. Results 24 hours later, the apartment was reopened. The wagon had been moved, but was otherwise intact. Upon retrieval of the wagon by D-6023, it was discovered the cardboard sign had been shredded and the sculpture books had been removed. The art supply catalogs showed signs of having been intensively consulted, with several pages having been torn out and or crumpled, and the order forms had been filled out with crude markings in an unknown fluid. Study of the order forms revealed that SCP-602 would like new chisels, new mallets, a miniature kiln, and lastly, the press release had been shredded, then reassembled with an unknown adhesive, then crumpled, 
and then flattened again. Analysis SCP-602 is confirmed to be sapient and to be willing to negotiate. Note No, I'm not suggesting that we just give the SCP whatever it wants. But we've established quasi-peaceful contact with an SCP previously thought intractable and at less than a twentieth of the cost of any one of the previous exploration attempts. We may even be able to convince it to trade its old tools for new ones, although giving it is completely out of the question, of course. Researcher Vacht. Addendum 4. Document 602-CP-1. Contact Protocol. As a result of contacts 2 through 17, see respective contact logs for details. The following protocols have been developed for successful interaction with SCP-602. Successful is defined as greater than 90% survival rate. 1. Always announce yourself at the door before entering. 2. Do not touch the statues. 3. Do not make any negative comments about the statues or their artistic merits. Constructive criticism seems to be acceptable. 4. Do not touch the sculpting tools. If replacement sculpting tools have been supplied, SCP-602 will place its discarded tools in a bucket by the door. The bucket may be collected when leaving the apartment. 5. All surveillance devices must be announced before installation, and their function must be clearly described. SCP-602 promptly locates and destroys all hidden or otherwise unacknowledged surveillance devices, and uses the debris as projectiles. Surveillance devices which were properly announced remain intact and operational, until such time as SCP-602 wishes to create or modify a statue, at which point it deactivates all surveillance devices simultaneously. When it is finished, it reactivates the surveillance devices. 6. Never enter the apartment alone. 7. No flash photography. 8. No smoking. 9. No spitting. 10. No chewing gum. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-601, Sophocles' Chorus, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.